Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager BB1199 5x4 US3 ST. ST means steeple, is what it means. Let's take a look at what this hinge is. Talk about why you might use it, uh, why you might need it. Okay, so first a visual tour and then we'll talk about its dimensions and then we'll go further on from there. This is a BB1199 5x4 with a steeple tip is what it is. Okay, If it looks fairly unusual uh, for a hinge, that's okay. I wouldn't say it's unusual, I would say it's less common. But this is what this hinge looks like. Let's take some dimensions. It's well, okay, first, the, dimensionally, it's an 1199. So what that means is the leaf thickness is 190 thousandths. So let's put the sayer of truth on there and see what this actually measures. It is very unusual to have a hinge that measure, measures exactly its target size, and this does. It's 0 .190. That means it's heavyweight. This is a 5 by 4. That means it's 5 inch tall. The overall height of this hinge is indeed 5 inch. Okay. It is 4 inch overall width. Why would you have such a hinge? Well, there's there's a real good reason why you might have it. It might be the right hinge to have. You know, you might be used to 5x5 five because five, that's what everyone knows. That may not be the right hinge. Not, not whatsoever, in fact. Um, and that's the dimensional properties of this hinge. So, let's talk about where you're going to end up using this hinge now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like. And also, please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, so let's talk about what this hinge is and why you would use it. It's a BB1199 in no particular order. That means that it is a ball bearing hinge. There would be four bearing packets on this hinge because it's a 99. That means it's heavyweight. Heavyweight hinges will be four bearing packets when it's a five knuckle hinge, which is also inferred in that part number. Okay, five knuckle. This is a non-ferrous base material. That's also part of the 199 and the BB1199. When it's US3 like this, or probably it's certainly more accurately called 605, that means three things. It's made of solid brass, it's polished, and it has a lacquer on it. And that's indeed what this hinge is. BB1199 also means it's a full mortise hinge. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here and here, when that leaf, when those leaves are brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door in the frame. Okay, So this is what we call a full mortise hinge. As you change the swag on a hinge, or the bend on the leaf, you are going to uh, root and branch change the type of hinge that you're dealing with, completely changing the hinge. When you change that type of bend, that's there and there. Okay. Um, can't think of anything else that's inferred in the BB1199. Obviously, it's ball bearing. That's the BB part. Now, the 5 by 4 so the height is the first dimension in a hinge like this. Um, why that is so when doors are measured by the width first, that's a discussion probably for another time. It's simply vital to know that the height is the first dimension. Um, if you ordered, if you, if you were thinking it's like doors, as once upon a time I did, you would call this a 4 by 5 You would get a hinge to the job site and you would be way off. It would be 4 by 5 So be mindful, the height is the first dimension. The height is a great indicator, well the size actually, but the height is a great indicator of what door you're dealing with. What would you use a 5 inch tall hinge versus a 4 and a half or a 4? Or a 6 inch tall hinge or even an 8 inch tall hinge? 5 inch tells me it's probably heavier than average, or it's wider than normal, or it's used more than standard. Lots of volume, or it could be all of those. That's where you would use a 5 inch tall hinge. You throw um, heavy weight onto it, now we're really realizing you've got, some, you've got a door that's going to take a lot of use. Wider than 3 foot or 3 foot 6 and wider will get you to 5 inch and heavy weight. Um, but that's really where that's coming from. Standard doors, 4 and a half height is going to do a real good job. For every half inch that you increase in height, you add about 20% additional ca capability of the hinge to simply do its job, swing the door. Okay, So 5 inch tall hinges are a great choice. So the target or signals that you'll use for 5 inch versus a smaller hinge, certainly 3 foot 6 and wider. I like to use them on three, three wider than 3.0, but the book says 3.6 and wider. 
heavier than standard, higher frequency, frequency than standard. Okay. Now the four inch, that is a different animal altogether. That doesn't tell me much about the door, except that it's probably inch and three quarter thick. It could be thicker, um, but probably inch and three quarter. But what it tells me about is the frame condition. So when you select the width of a hinge, you want to select the width of the hinge such that the vertical axis of pivoting is as close to the center of the thickness of the door as possible. What's going to define that is, is what's, and this is what the, the width tells you, what's the treatment on the wall? Is there thick casing? Is there some sort of wall detail that that vertical axis of pivoting needs to be moved out further so that when you swing the door, you go to 90 degrees like we have now, but you want to go out further. So you've got to move that pivot point out further to get out and around your chair rail, your wall condition, your brick mold, your th thick casing. It could also refer to an inset. If your door is inset deeper into the pull side of the frame than standard, which is an eighth of an inch, three thirty second, or zero, well, what if you had an inset that was a half inch? Or what if you had an inset that was seven inch? The point of the matter is you need to think about where that vertical axis of pivoting is in relationship to what you're adding to the door and frame or you know trim that you need to get around if you need to go to past 90 degree, but also the inset, how far that door is. Uh, an example that I use all the time is an 18 inch, I'm not making this up, this is a real example, 18 inch thick wall. They have 18 inch oak for the jams, flat jams. These pairs of 15 light doors are centered in the thickness of those 18 inch jams. So what's your inset going to be? Well, uh, 18 minus inch and three quarter divided by two. So 16, eight and, a, eight and an eighth maybe, something like that. So your inset is eight and an eighth. So two ways to accomplish getting that door to actually swing. You either use a raised barrel hinge and you'll only go to about 90 degree, maybe 92 degree, or you're going to go with a wider hinge. You're going to go with a width of the hinge appropriate for the application. In that case, it would be an extremely wide hinge. And in fact, they were extremely wide hinges on, on this opening. There were several of them in this building. This building happens to be the original state capitol building of the state of Iowa, which is in Iowa City. Um, so that's where that example is. That's where you're going to determine that. Now, how do you determine the value of how wide of a hinge you need? But first, I can tell you that this client probably had a situation where there was no trim, that this was like a hollow metal, a knockdown hollow metal frame that wrapped over a wall in terms of its application, even though it's not. And that door could easily go to, uh, to 180 degree because there's no projecting trim is the bottom line. So the formula is this, door thickness Sorry, I am, I, I know it. It's either door thickness times two minus hinge back set or it's door thickness minus hinge back set times two. Bear with me. I think it's the former. This will be uh, hopefully valuable for you to, uh, to know. Okay, wide throw. Okay, yeah, so page seven, yeah, here we go. All right, so it's door thickness minus back set. So it was, it was the latter. Inch and three quarter minus quarter inch, that's inch and a half, times two is three inch. You then add any clearance that you need <clears throat> out here, and you add any inset. Well, clearly the client is using a very small value for clearance, if any, and a very small value for inset, if any, like less than one inch total. So inch and three quarter minus back set times two. Uh, back. Oh, sorry, the back set. That's the part of the door that's not mortised for the hinge. So in an inch and three quarter thick door, back set's generally a quarter inch. Okay. Um, on a four inch wide hinge like this, it could be a little greater, but you have to calculate that. So inch and three quarter uh, minus back set minus quarter inch is uh, inch and a half times two is three inch. Let's say plus zero for clearance, plus an eighth inch. So now we're at three and an eighth. You go with the next largest hinge that you can actually order. You round up four inch, four and a half, five, six, eight inch when it comes to 
um, standard hinges that aren't considered wide throw. The point of all of that is don't just arrive at five by fives because that's what everyone thinks is the right hinge. A better hinge is one that brings that vertical axis of pivoting closer into the thickness of the door. So that's the hinge that you want to choose. If you were asked, if you were given a piece of paper and it had an application on it and drew the door and frame and said, tell me the size of the hinge that you would use. If you, if you, in that formula, if you went with a four and a half or a five or anything other than four inch, it would be incorrect in the sense that best practice would make it closest to three and an eighth inch. Okay. Um, so that's where that's used. Tuck that vertical axis of pivoting in, especially when you have a heavy, high frequency, wide door that's already going to be getting used a lot. Give the hinge the best fighting chance possible. That's why this is four inch. I didn't run the calculation for the client. I know that they simply matched existing, but most absolutely someone in decades past calculated the hinge that they were using on this. Okay. Steeple, that is obviously what this tip is called. That is a decorative tip. Button tips are common, the most common, obviously. They look like the button on a coat or a shirt. Ball tip is the most common decorative tip. Urn tip, steeple tip, um, acorn tip is another one. And then there are other manufacturers who have many other designs of tips. Other manufacturers of hinges, McKinney and Bomber and Stanley and Ives and many, many others. Especially McKinney, they've got a line of unusual decorative tips. Um, and the ones that I mentioned earlier, urn, steeple, acorn, and button, uh, ball tip, those are the classics. You know, those ones you'll see all the time, but other manufacturers have specific ones. Um, steeple is not uncommon. Um, it's, not, it's not something that you are, are never going to see. You will see it. Ball tip is the most, most, it's the size of a small marble, really, that's there. Okay. Now, 605 in the part number, that means three things, like I said earlier. Solid brass, highly polished, lacquer applied. That lacquer is to protect that brass finish. Okay. Less my fingerprints that are now on there. But you can look at that, and you can definitely know that it is actual solid brass. Actual solid brass versus plated steel has a certain, to me, a warmth to it where you can immediately tell that it's not plated. Plated is far more metallic, shiny, reflective. Polished brass is warm and inviting. Those are the words that I use. Um, now, screws, uh, oh, just to prove the point because we'll lead to it, made of solid brass, okay? It's most likely that the hinge pin in this is stainless steel. Uh, not most likely, it is stainless steel. And the reason I pulled that magnet out was to demonstrate, oh, one more part of the part number, AWS. I know that this is a wood door and wood frame application, so I specified to Hager AWS, which means all wood screws. This magnet definitely tells us that these screws are not ferrous at all. That's funny. You see how that's marginally magnetic? Brass would be thoroughly unmagnetic, thoroughly. So is this a stainless steel screw that's been plated? Yeah, possibly. Um, why is that possibly okay? If you've ever used, every, every carpenter, every person who's done work related to woodworking, finish hardware, etc. At some point we've all put a screwdriver in there and just started turning it and whoosh, sheared the head right off. What in the world happened? Well, you realize it's brass. Um, and the hole may not have been pre-drilled the proper diameter, so they're going with stuff that's going to be substantially uh, more durable. If that is an issue, let us know. We'll, we'll find out from Hager, can you supply solid brass base material screws? But there's some reasoning behind this, and it's because lots of stripped bra solid brass screws um, is why. Let's switch to the screen view, and let's just take a closer look uh, at some attached, uh, some uploaded documentation. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, let's take a look at some images that we have here. That's the box. I think Hager uses the U.S. system because they've been in business for six decades, I think, before the BHMA. Well, they were in decades, they were in business decades before the U.S. system came into place in the early 1930s. Uh, there's the hinge with its screw package. Yeah, 
There's your steeple tip, your bearing. Nice tight ma margins here. A good job finishing on the inside in these areas. Attempting to show you a bit of what the brass looks like. These warm tones in here would be a good example. The back side of the hinge, the screw package. Okay. Now we have some links posted down below here. We have the template. Okay, this is for five by four, five by four and a half, five, 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 six, five, seven, and five, eight. This is gonna give you the locations of the screw holes. This is called a template. The locations of these screw holes is also called the template pattern. The word template is used two different ways. Um, if you have a door and frame prep for the template pattern, this hinge will fit. This template is also good for these other part numbers in both ferrous and non-ferrous base hinges. DB1199s are down here. Give you the F dimension. Some people like to know how that dimension of the hinge. People just tell me that dimension, and I wonder, well, what are what are you working on? Tell me, tell me why you're asking for that. No, I just need to know that. Okay, I get it. For the different widths over here. There is then a document called Product Catalog. This will somewhere inside of here show us a BB1199. There it is. BB1199 gives you the profile of it. All of the sizes that you can do in a BB1199, everything from four and a half by four all the way up to eight by eight. Eight by eight is a real hinge. I have sold those. I actually, in fact, stock some. I also stock 5x12, a very unusual hinge, which would be a WT BB1168. I actually stock some of those in a 5x12. It's a factory order. Don't order that unless you know you need it because it will complicate things. Um, okay, then we can... This is the image that the client provided to us actually on this job. They were just telling me they wanted me to, we will have to get that link fixed. Uh, well, by the time you're seeing this video, we'll have it fixed. The client wanted to let me know, here's the tip that I'm looking for. And I saw that and I said, well, that's clearly a steeple tip. That's no problem. Okay. I did pull up a decorative tip. More than, well, okay, decorative tip, sure. Acorn ball, steeple, urn, the button tip or flat button tip, tricon, flush pin. There'll be hinges that don't have traditional tips. Very clean, a hospital tip, that's ligature resistant. Prevent something from being strapped or hooked on the top of that. Fast riveted pin, this is gonna be probably for a residential hinge where it's just a, a pin that's been driven down and riveted in place. So you can't remove those hinge leaves from each other. Um, also on this page, we'll show you hinge swagged standard here, okay? So that's a nice, nice page to be able to look at. Now also on this page is a link to the manufacturer's page as seen here. And when you click on that, you'll be able to get to this page where you can pull up not only all of the Hager products that we sell, by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Other encyclopedic documents are given here, are provided here, such as the Hager Keying Service Manual, a video that I did overviewing their keying platform. Uh, we have a catalog from 1915 here. If you wanna see what Hager was doing over 100 years ago, there's your resource. ADA standards for accessible design is here. Why? Well, they sell thresholds. Thresholds are very much governed by that, as are automatic door bottoms. Uh, other encyclopedic documents. If it's important for Hager, we're gonna stick it here. You know, if it's a resource of ours. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.
In conclusion, if you have any questions on the BB1199 5x4 Steeple AWS 605 or any other Hager product, let us know. Um, you know, Hager, to me, they were always Hager Hinge. That's how I know the company, Hager Hinge. Well, they do a lot more than just hinges, and they have for a real long time. Um, and what that means is, okay, um, they also have some Loctite in here. That's not the first time I've seen this. I forgot that occasionally certain manufacturers will pack that in there. That is to allow you to remove the steeple tip, get some thread lock on there, tighten it down, because those tips are going to come loose. The door is cycling, okay? That It's just... I was sitting at the dinner table one time and I had, uh, the house I was living in at the time, I had uh, solid brass, decorative hinges with steeple tips. Why wouldn't I? I'm in the business. At the dinner table and all I heard was a thud, thud. I heard something fall and you could tell it was metallic and you can tell that it was hitting the tile floor. I, was, I, I, I thought for a moment, looked at my wife, she didn't hear it, but then she heard it. My kids didn't hear it. and. I said, I bet that's a decorative tip just fell off that door. This is probably what happened. Um, sure enough, I walked right over to the door. There it was laying on the floor. So I went back and put thread lock on every one of them because it was a constant problem. They would fall, they would drop off, they would get swept up. Who knows where they went to, and now you're missing a decorative tip. And they aren't cheap, so be sure to use those. You'll either use them when you install them, or you're going to use the material eventually on any door that gets any movement. Now, that door was the most used door in the home, garage to mudroom, so that door is getting cycled countless times uh, every single day. Um, you know, other doors, not really a problem, but they do get loose. Uh, and Hager's been in business since probably the mid-19th century. Um, they have a they have a couple of gentlemen there um, who are exceptionally amazing when it comes to the education possibilities within our industry, they are both fully uh, involved. Teaching class, helping, um, mentoring, uh, whether they, my current uh, situation is studying for the EHC credential and I've forcefully adopted one of the two people at Hager that I'm referring to. He's, he wasn't given a choice. I, I, I said, you're my mentor. Um, and these, these guys are just extremely gracious, very, very generous with their time. The industry is subs the industry is orders of magnitude better because of their involvement on an educational perspective. Anyway, if you have any questions on the BB1199 with a steeple tip or any other Hager product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.